Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in this magnificent world, a good day to you. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My hope is as I speak, my words touch you and inspire you, and I pray that I serve spirit and you well. Here we go. Recently, I picked up a book, Becoming a Spiritualist, by H. Gordon Burroughs. It was one of the books that when I opened to this ability of mediumship and became aware of the spiritualist church here on Long Island, it was recommended in the course of study to get. And it's um, an interesting book. It's a book that gives you Burroughs' understanding of spiritualism. And one of the chapters is spiritualism is a religion of self-culture. So... Um, I don't always consider myself to be the brightest uh, light in the chandelier. I had to stop, read it, and reread it, and reread it. And I'm not trying to put myself down that in saying that I, I try to make humor with myself, but stating, for me, experience is the better teacher than reading. Reading and uh, comprehending is not my easiest way of going about things, but having experience teaches me well. And I've been fortunate to say, as Sharon pointed out, that it's been January 24th, 1990, 1990, let me think, 93, I was 30, 97. Yep, I had to think about that because I was 33 years old. That's when spirit showed up in my life. 33 years old, in my own apartment, all four grandparents showed up. My logical mind was, you're dead, I can see you, I must be on my way out, okay? For the past 24 years, the religion of self-culture, spiritualism, experience is what has been the greatest teacher. And I want to share an experience with you right now in light of all that's going on for all of us. It's personal in the hope I will share it with you in the hope that it will help to move you to your own thought processes around experiences that you've had as well. Recently, as many of you may know, January 26th was the anniversary of my mother's passing. It was the first year and the anniversary of our father's passing. It was the fifth year. Yes, both of my parents passed on the same day, four years apart from each other within 12 minutes of each other. Okay. That's a whole nother story, but in recent months, uh, the past two months, there was a woman who came running up my block. Now, my block is a very small block. It's very well traveled by cars, not a lot of foot traffic. This woman went running up the block, and I almost wept because she looked exactly like my mother. Uh, the way she was bent over, God bless her, the hairstyle, the, the gait that she had, and it moved me to tears. Now, yesterday... My sister and I gathered to go through the process of um, going through the final pieces of our mother's uh, personal affairs, meaning her photographs and her jewelry. And as I was going, I ran, of course, to the bakery to get a cake because you don't show up at somebody's house without something, of course. And as I'm driving up another street, that same woman is walking down the street. And I just sent a thought out to mom. Thanks, mom. Gotcha. Understand you'll be there. Now, when H. Gordon Burroughs mentions spiritualism as a religion of self-culture, a religion of self-understanding, and the way I understand his words, it is a way for us to move in this world and understand this world connected to the source, as all of us are, as divine beings, as all of us are, living on this physical planet as, with the grace of God, all of us are. But in the moments that we fall, falter, fail, question, lose faith, disagree, don't believe, even mediums go through failing, faltering, disbelief, don't believe, lack of faith. In the moments that we need spirit the most, whether or not we're paying attention, spirit shows up. I wasn't asking for a sign of that woman to come running up or walking up the street with her shopping bag as she was. But I was grateful for the moment because it gave me a chance to take a breath in and go, okay, I can work with my sister. 
and then we can FaceTime our other sister and we can go through this process of wrapping up the final details of our mother's life experience. So there was some beautiful moments with this and there was some hysterical laughter and I'm all about embarrassing myself publicly because why not? But one of the things we found that my sisters and I chuckled over and I'm actually gonna show them. My mother back in the 50s and 60s when I was a child had a pair of Aurora Borealis uh, screw on earrings that were fabulous. And as a little boy, I must admit, I tried them on more than once, but very quickly to make sure that my father didn't catch me. And when we were going through them, my sister and I held them up for my sister in LA to look at them. And she's like, no, I don't want them. Christine says, no, they're costume. And I was like, of course I want them. What are you crazy? Come Halloween, if there's an appropriate moment, I might just put them on. Or Sharon in class, you might see me show up with them one day, okay? But the point is not about me being a humorist. It's not me about making fun of this experience. The truth is, in looking at these earrings and remembering back to the woman my mother was with those earrings, I was able to take a breath in and go, oh, right. She wasn't the woman for the last four years of her life who lost her memory. She wasn't the woman who struggled in a facility, not remembering moment to moment what was going on. Back in the 50s and in the 60s, she was a vibrant woman. Now, religion of self-culture, experience. I know without question that she is walking in the realm of spirit with my father, hopefully by her own choice, <laughs> but in this experience of walking the spiritual realm with my father, being all that she was, not all that the end of her life was. And in that moment, understanding that and being in this world, I can breathe. Because in the moments that we, ladies and gentlemen, deal with our own disbelief and our own questioning about is there life after death? Am I going to make it through? I have illness. Will spirit help me to feel better? Will spirit work with me through this illness process? I'm concerned about COVID. What about my finances? What about my children? Spirit is standing with us, giving us moments that if we are open in our hearts and minds, we will receive the inspiration from them to be able to take another breath in and take the next step forward. And to that, I say the biggest amen is humanly possible, the biggest amen going. Ladies and gentlemen, living in this three-dimensional universe, walking in this world, being in relationship and loving takes strength and courage. Being on this planet and knowing that we might be in a relationship with someone whom we love dearly, who may not be in our lives someday, takes strength and courage. Every one of us could very easily withdraw from life and relationship. Every one of us could very easily become hermetic, as many of us have had to do with COVID. And every one of us can choose to close down, close down our relational heart. But to what purpose? It takes courage to live in this world. It takes strength to love in this world. It takes chutzpah to be able to stand on our own two feet, to be able to move forward ahead. And as much as I'll make fun of these earrings, to put on earrings when the occasion doesn't necessarily warrant, but be proud with who we are. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> moving on from that statement. It takes courage to be able to love deeply and well, not knowing what the next day may bring. But in the moments we're uncertain, in the moments where we're not sure whether we're going to manage this life, whether we're going to be able to move through an illness process, whether we're going to be able to stay in a relationship, whether we're going to be able to support a loved one as they're moving out of this life. 
spirit will always step in spirit will always show us they're there spirit will always provide energetic emotional healing support and in the moments that we feel our darkest i feel that spirit will give us a sign spirit will give us an awareness spirit will touch in with our hearts so much so that as i've said will be able to take a breath and relax. In the, the experience of life, as we mature, as we mature both chronologically through our aging process, but even as we mature spiritually, the religion of self-culture, as H. Gordon Burroughs says, the more we get into the awareness of our divinity and our connection to spirit, the more we sink into the energetic experience or sit in the power, the more we stay in a place where we are divinely connected. Now, divinely connected, pause, book, uh, bookmark this and state this quickly. Divinely connected does not mean that we're out in the realm of spirit. It means that we are physically here and fully aware of our own divinity. In the moments that we are divinely connected, where we are here and at the same time connected to spirit, we will receive the inspiration, the encouragement, and the upliftment needed. John and I were out for dinner the other night. We went to a local tavern. I, tavern? It's a pub. I don't usually call them taverns. But we went out. John wanted fish tacos. I wanted a cheeseburger. Really healthy food. But... While we arrived at the pub, the place was packed, and I looked at John, and I said, I'm not comfortable. I'm a little nervous because the whole bar area had a lot of people hanging out, having drinks and dinner. We sat in a, seg a separated area, and all of a sudden, my teacher stepped in and said, don't worry. And I was like, oh, John, I'm being told not to worry. Don't worry. And I saw this energetic bubble around the two of us. Now, that doesn't mean that we ripped off our masks and took deep breaths and we sat with our masks on. When the food came, we ate. When we were done, we put our masks on. We were being conscious and proper and appropriate in the experience, but spirit was reminding us that all is well. I'm not suggesting that we live in the world with uh, carefree abandon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes and no, meaning don't put ourselves at risk. Be mindful, take care of ourselves, but at the same time, we can trust in spirit with the information that they share with us. The point of this is not about the pub or our dinner. It's about a moment where spirit helped to remind me that we would be okay. In the experience of our lives, ladies and gentlemen, taking aside or stepping aside from that example, each of us has had a life experience, I'm sure, that has brought us to despair, maybe depleted in our sense of self or hope. And if you notice, you're still here. And if you notice, you're still walking forward. And if you notice, most of you still can say that you're smiling. Not every day but you're able to live in this world, on this planet, moving forward. In the way that H. Gordon Burroughs references spiritualism as a religion of self-culture, the way I understand it is it's a religion that helps to teach us how to move in this world while we are connected to spirit, how to live here fully, how to love here courageously and strongly, and how to live here and even take moments of grief and make them into moments of humor. Ladies and gentlemen, we were all given this magnificent life. And as we walk in this world, we have an opportunity to live, to love and to laugh fully. In your experience of life, my prayer is that you do it with carefree abandon. And as you do it, my prayer is that you feel the touch of spirit in the moments that are the most difficult.
and in the moments that are most joyous, and that in the moments are painful, and that in the moments are pleasant. Bottom line, my hope is that you feel spirit walking with you consistently and forever. God bless you and thank you.